the big story that we are tracking and uh, this is with regard to the new Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita bills. The truckers have called off their protests after the government's assurance on the new hit and run law in the new criminal code. As per the section 106 part 2 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita, if a death has been caused by negligent driving and the driver fails to alert the police, it will attract imprisonment of up to 10 years and a fine of 7 lakh rupees. However, if the driver reports the death, imprisonment will be reduced to 5 years and the truck drivers have been protesting against uh, the law, expressing concerns about the backlash from uh, mobs and potential lynching if they don't flee the accident site. Union Home Secretary said that the clause has not been implemented as yet and a decision will be taken only after consultation with the All India Motor Transport Congress. The two-day protest had led to massive queues outside petrol pumps as people resorted to panic buying uh, because of fears of fuel stations running dry. Joining us to take this forward is uh, Pinky Anand, former additional Solicitor General of India and senior advocate Siddharth Lutra. Very important to discuss the implications of uh, this development that has happened as a result of the truckers' protest. Uh, Ms. Anand, if I can begin with you. Do you think this sends out a right message that these were laws, criminal laws that were passed by Parliament? Now there have been protests by truck drivers saying that we are very concerned about the implications of the hit and run provisions. Uh, and they are now put in abeyance uh, and the government has said that we've not implemented the law right now. All concerns will be met. Does this create a, a confusion somewhat? Uh, let's, let's be honest. When new laws come into being, uh, and particularly you're talking about laws of such kind of standing, which can you know, consider the entire criminal purport of the country, including, of course, the particular incident in hand, uh, the question of implementation is always uh, a, a raw one, so to say. And it takes its own set of procedures, its own set of training, its own sense of sensitivities, enforcements. So, uh, I mean, at the same time, I only feel this, that the idea of the criminal laws is to address issue, issues of concern to the public. And when those are addressed, as they have been in uh, Section 106 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita, you ultimately have liability on account of rash and negligent act and, and also the fear of leaving somebody dying on the road without being rescued or medically treated. And these are the issues that have been addressed as far as that is concerned. So uh, to say that they've been put in abeyance or that there will be consultation process, law, society and the interaction has always scope for interaction. So the concerns of people may be met by mm. interactions, either of a nature which will possibly change anything, possibly only to make people understand what the liabilities are. But frankly, questions of health and life of people, particularly in a country like India, where you have almost 11% of death, which is the highest in the world over, uh, you do need to address of how, as to how to save them. In fact, I remember at a time when I was party to the Good Samaritans case, the Save Life Foundation, and the whole idea was how People who are good Samaritans shouldn't be prosecuted because they're reporting a crime, particularly of, of uh, Rash and Negligence Act, particularly of uh, death by driving or by hit and run or whatever the case may be. So the idea here is to at least save the lives of people. And there have been various judgments also which have addressed this from time to time. I don't think we should be uh, circumspect about a consultation process at all, which has been specified as to say that creates mm -hmm. confusion. Right. Uh, let me also take that point to uh, Siddharth Lutra. Uh, Mr. Lutra, how do you see these developments? Do you think the government will be able to assuage the concerns of the truck drivers across the country? What is the government saying right now? That if you report the death caused in an accident to the police in time, then you can get up to five years in jail. But at the same time, it is a bailable offence. This is the word that is going on, uh, going out to the transporters community. Do you think this will assuage their concerns? There are enough checks and balances in the law? So uh, the first question that we need to ask ourselves, Ms. Anand made a very valid point that uh, life is uh, sacrosanct and we must work towards protecting life and health. But a more fundamental question arises in these cases is, is criminalization of conduct, and in this case, not criminalization so much, but penalization of conduct, increasing the penalty, is that the way forward? Uh, Singapore has done a variation. They have, they've drawn a distinction between rashness and negligence, 
and treated them differentially. We have chosen not to apply that analysis because the test of rashness and negligence, which you've actually taken, only increased the sentence and taken it from way back from uh, uh, the 1830s, give or take. We really accepted that English uh, that test applied by the English and continued it till date. Having said that, yes, it is important that there should be an incentivization legislatively for reportage. But the point that to be considered is Today, you have a section of people who protested about a legislation. The government says they look into it. The fact is the government has not yet notified any of the legislations. It is their prerogative as and when to do it now that they have the assent. But should there have been a deeper comprehension regarding the philosophical moorings of the criminal law? In my view, perhaps definitely yes, there should have been a deeper understanding on the philosophical moorings of all the criminal provisions that are now being brought in here. And therefore, uh, while protests by individuals are important, but I'm also concerned that once a law is passed by parliament, should protest itself be the way forward? I mean, after all, uh, what about what what discussion took place? What discussions take place in Parliament? The, that's the place where these discussions should have been should have taken place, rather than for individual citizens to have to uh, hit the streets. And that's the concern I feel. And then when the government believes right. that individual citizens' concerns have to be assuaged, uh, that is that can be perceived in two ways. One, that the government is sensitive to the needs of people, and that's what I hope is the case. Uh, is is so in the present case. Mm. But at the same time, there is also concern, should there not perhaps have been deeper thought on some issues like this? Right. Uh, that is an important point. Uh, Ms. Anand, do you also agree that there should have been a wider consultation process before this law was passed in Parliament or even brought to Parliament? At the same time, now that the culpable homicide section, sections related to hit-and-run uh, cases are being called to question, there could be challenge from other groups regarding other provisions of the criminal laws as well. Let me tell you this, Parikshit. Any law that is made will be challenged. You just saw today morning the environment uh, post-environment clearance uh, memo that was done by the government last year was challenged, and it has been stayed also for that matter. So whether it will be challenged or not challenged, most, most laws, when they come into being, and particularly criminal laws, which create higher liability, are bound to be challenged. I don't see any way out of that situation. So challenge is not the concern. Uh, what is of concern is whether it's a legitimate exercise, whether it is an exercise which should be done. The question is also, of course, a consultation process. Now, in the present case, uh, there has been substantive consultation. Not that there hasn't been. Various viewpoints have been taken. Rajya Sabha committee was formed, which looked into the uh, issues from various stakeholders from all across board, and some of us were parties to those consultations. Uh, so to say that uh, it wasn't done also may not be correct. There never is enough. Whenever there is higher liability, there will always be issues. But in the present case, as far as this is concerned, there is one legitimate concern that seems to be there. People do actually fear being literally uh, put, to, put down because there has been an accident whether that's been a rightful accident or wrongful accident, rash accident or not is one question. But the point is, yes, uh, mob lynching does happen and it is known to happen, particularly in India. So the fear of the truckers that is being expressed appears to be genuine. The question is, will it meet within the statute or not is, is one of the questions. So I think a consultation in this regard with the government has put out uh, is a very fair thing. As long as we are able to cover it in this situation, you, you can't say one person's health or one person's life <coughs> against the concern of even a person who's actually had the accident. Either he was guilty, not guilty, that's another question altogether. But you can't have more and more deaths because of an incident that has happened. And that is something which must definitely be looked at. Right. So uh, you are saying that uh, legitimate concerns must be looked at. And... Uh... Uh, laws are always open to challenge. Uh, Mr. Luthra, you want to come in. Do you feel that there are other concerns that the new laws raise which probably require more consultation till the implementation begins? 
I'll, I'll just want to respond to what Ms. Anand said. Uh, the point is, it's not just about protest regarding certain laws. Protest is valid or welcome, is welcome, that's wonderful to know. The issue is more fundamental, and that is this. We want, Ms. Anand talked about a very large figure of fatalities on Indian roads, very valid concern. The point is successive governments have not bothered to implement and ensure that there is a national highway police, so there is provision under the law. You don't have a national highway police. You don't have a regulatory mechanism. You don't have ambulances parked at highway tolls as they are to be done by the concessionaires uh, to whom the National Highway Authority gives concessions. Similar position has to be applied to the state highways and similar mechanism brought into place. The camber of the roads, the road conditions, we are not dealing with that. We have various safety issues which we have not dealt with, which are going to lead to unnecessary accidents and tragic loss of life. And our, if our answer is only to increase the penalty, in my view, that does not fit the bill. That's so far as the uh, hit and run cases right. are concerned. The second thing is, look, today it's the law, and it would be inappropriate and part of and any individual as a citizen to say that it is not the law. It has to be enforced. That's all. It has to be notified. The remedy, as Ms. Anand rightly said, lies in the courts. You can challenge the legislation in the courts. But I will only say this. Barring a few select amendments, there is not much to challenge the court because it's really a repetition of what the old law said. There are a handful of provisions. There are some good things like community service, which is right. being added. But there is... I, I wish there would have been much more... Uh, there would have been a lot more change because that would have led to a lot more positive change as well. So there are concerns in bringing... All right. In, uh, we have to take a short break on that note. Right. Uh, Mr. Luthra, we have to take one short break and I'll return to you and Ms. Pinky Anand. Several important more questions uh, are there on the program. We'll come to you right back after a short break. All right. Uh, you're joining us on New Center and we're discussing uh, the implications of the new criminal codes in light of the protests by truck drivers across the country. With us right now are noted lawyers Siddharth Luthra and Pinky Anand. Siddharth Luthra, you were talking about the concerns. Now that the BNS bills have been passed by Parliament, concerns have been raised by truck drivers. The implementation date is still away. It has to be notified. Uh, what are some of the things that you feel the government needs to do now? So I think till the law is notified, and there have been other instances where laws are not notified because government believes that there is greater consultation required. The fact is uh, that there are there is a there is some incoherence because you have, as I've said in writing as well, you have organized crime here, but you don't have the rigors of invoking organized crime or the rigors that come with an organized crime provision. You have uh, terrorism here, but you don't have the rigors with the UAP Act, both for starting investigation is also this. And also, you don't have clarity whether the, this provision will now be investigated by the NIA or by the state police, because otherwise all UAP offenses have to go to the NIA, uh, be offered to the, refer to the NIA mandatorily, whether they take it up as a matter of the, them and the central government. So I think this level of fine tuning needs to be done. And the fact that the government has seen that there is some concern among a large section of the affected citizenry, because these are the people who are who actually are the lines of movement of all essential goods. If your truck, your trucks are one of the major movement because trains don't go everywhere, flights don't go anywhere. So that's the roads are the major mover. And the fact is, the, while this government has done a fair bit to get the national highways and the state highways in shape, that is an ongoing process. Until we have adequate safety and insured on the roads, not only for the persons who are victims of accidents, but also the truck drivers who themselves sometimes become victims of accidents because of the road conditions and the climate conditions and other limitations as a result of road uh, um, management. So these issues will have to be addressed across the board, not just for this one provision, but across the board. And I hope that this is an opportunity for the government to consider 
reviewing and tweaking these laws to make them more uh, socially relevant as also philosophically co coherent to ensure that the presumption of innocence is not lost, that higher penalties don't necessarily make law enforcement more legitimate or more efficacious. Right. Right. So socially relevant philosophically coherent is what the government needs to do in terms of these laws. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Lutra. Thank you for your time. Ms. Anand, final thoughts to you. Uh, what, according to you, is the fine-tuning that the government now needs to do with these laws? Uh, frankly, let me tell you, Vikshad, my analysis of this would be on a different front. My question is not what the government can do or should do or what the consultation might be. That is, we'll see. But the real question is, is the liability, is the liability appropriate? Is it in accordance with what criminal jurisprudence, with accordance with social jurisprudence? Is it something which needs to be dealt with? In India, when you have such kind of accidents and you have the highest, as I mentioned earlier, and you have as a bailable offense, I mean, 304A is, is a bailable offense up to two years as, as it existed in the erstwhile IPC, the Indian Penal Code, you basically had a different kind of thought process. And we all understand how this really does function. So to have a bailable offense is one part, to have a non-bailable offense is another part. Whether you should have five years uh, and or extendable up to 10 years in the event of non-reporting is something which the government might look at. But the question of liability in the first instance and for it to be non-bailable in a case of rash and negligent act which results in death which means basically not amounting to culpable homicide, which means that your actions were such that it would cause death and you should have known that this would cause because of your action or your negligence. I, I think in these circumstances, in most criminal offences of this category or others, and we've had the various issues, including, say, let, let's say what happened with Nirbhaya, which happened with other cases, you know, including motor accidents, including non-reporting, including non-saving of lives, we do have to save lives. We do have to ensure that all lives are saved. And right. that is our concern. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Anand, for joining us. We appreciate your presence on the program. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Center. More news and updates continue right here. For more news and updates, all you need to do is follow CNBC TV 18 on all of our digital platforms.